Well, good morning and welcome to worship at, uh, with our Delta United online worship. Uh, whether you're watching live over Zoom this morning or watching the recording later on, you are warmly, warmly welcomed with us. Um, this morning, there are, I have two announcements, and if somebody else has other announcements, you can, you can add those in. Um, the Helen wanted me to remind folks that the warm hands, cold feet um, will continue to be, even though we're not in the building, um, donations will still be gladly accepted to uh, purchase socks for Wesley. Helen, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Um, I can't see you on my. Well, uh, I did. Um, I did issue some information in the weekly bulletin, so that uh, anyone uh, you can purchase your own socks and save them for us. Or if you wish to make a donation, um, you can contact me for information, or you can uh, e-transfer to me, or we can work something out. But we'll we'll get your donation one way or the other, and hope to do the purchasing by the end of the month, early February, so these socks are in place while it's still cold. Awesome. So uh, unless we go back into church, it'll have to be done through me, I guess. Okay, thank you. All right. And I don't know if people can see behind my shoulder. We have made uh, strides in our roof fund. I think we only have two, two and a bit more rows left of uh, shingles to, to complete, um, which means that it's, well, it's less than $4,000. Um, so that is, uh, that is good news. So I would uh, invite you as you are able to continue to support the roof fund. If there are no other announcements, and if there are, please unmute yourself. Susan? I have an announcement. Okay. Tuesday is my birthday. Happy birthday, Susan. Thank we you. haven't done birthdays in a while. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, January 11, I'll be old. <laughs> Officially? Oh, <laughs> what? You just. I will, be, I will be 74 years old. 74. I don't think that that's old anymore, that's to be old. honest. <laughs> just, uh, just to let everybody know, Edith's pantry will remain open during our absence from the building. Uh, I will be there tomorrow at uh, with Gloria Weir uh, for the 10 till 12 opening. So we will continue to need donations for the pantry as we go along. So if you have anything and you want to drop it off, we'll be there tomorrow uh, between 10 and 12. Awesome. And we did that and we had a lovely family uh, in last week uh, uh, that were very appreciative of the pantry. So uh, we'll keep you posted as things go, but we are going to remain active and open uh, through our absence from the building. And Joe, um, I still don't have a key to get in so for the week after. Yeah, I'm working on it, Hugh. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we will begin with our land acknowledgement. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. This morning, we are privileged to worship on lands that are situated upon the traditional terries, territories of the Erie, Erie Neutral here in Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. As we light our Christ candle this morning, we remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that we are called to be lights in the world for each other. And I thought I had it in the... There we go. We will now have our first hymn.
Let us pray together. Again, O oh God, we come seeking. We seek music for our voices and gospel for our hearts. We seek courage for our spirits, purpose in our lives, and actions for our hands and feet. Find us in this time of worship, we pray. Let us pray together. Baptizing God, flush the grit and grime from our eyes, renewing our sight for your revelation. Quench our thirst with your water of life, bringing us to your word to fill our living. Water the gardens of our souls with your promise, growing a covenant of spirited love. Dissolve our hearts in the wellspring of your passion, uniting us in communion with your living water. Amen. Our Old Testament reading will be read by Julie Gibson. Acts. Oops. Julie, you're muted still. There you go. Okay. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Our New Testament reading is Luke 3 verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah John answered all of them by saying I baptize you with water but the one who is more powerful than I is coming I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire his winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all of the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the, heaven was op the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you, I am well pleased. Thanks be to God for this reading of their holy word. This morning, I'd like to talk about the power of you. I think the, that sentence initially sounds like a, a new age motivational speaker TED talk, but we should never underestimate the power of the word you, especially in that second person singular, when someone is speaking directly to you. We know how the use of the word you feels like you're the only person in the world. I love you. You are mine. When someone speaks to us like this, there is weight behind those words. The person speaking really does mean what they're saying. Of, of course, there is a negative side that can be damaging and hurtful when words like, I hate you, are used. But for today, let us not dwell there. We have enough outlets 
in the world to experience that type of content that, if I may say, does nothing to feed our spirit. Today, let us explore Luke, Luke's version of Jesus' baptism. When the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove and says, you are my son, the beloved, with you, I am well pleased. And discovered the power that is present in the word you, as it is shared by God through the Spirit. How, how does this you statement impact us? What is God saying to us through it? Whenever I read this Luke scripture, I am reminded of one of my favorite passages in Isaiah. I have called you by name. You are mine. Or even the hymn in more, vi more voices with the same title that has the refrain, you are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. The Spirit's you message in our reading this morning is not just for Jesus. Our baptism is our reminder that we are delicately held, endlessly loved, forever forgiven. The United Church's Song of Faith, the church's newest statement of faith, says that baptism signifies the nurturing, sustaining, and transforming power of God's love and our grateful response to that grace. Not only are we loved, but in that love, we are called to share that love with others. Carolyn Lewis is a Lutheran minister and professor of theology at Luther Seminary in Minnesota. She may be one of my favorite theological commentators. I go every Sunday I preach to listen to what she has to say about the lectionary that Sunday. And she says that for Luke, the you statement to Jesus is the you that God in Jesus says to everyone, not just to each one of us personally, but to those that we don't see, the, the, those that we easily pass by and overlook, perhaps those we don't want to see. Scripture gives us endless examples of those that we thought were the, or that, that that were thought to be separated from God's love by the people of the day and where God through Jesus reminds them and those around them that they too are children of God outsiders like the woman at the well the tax collectors the Canaanite woman people who lived on the fringes of society whom, and whom Jesus offered love when everyone else showed them hate. We know there are those who are labeled as outsiders in our own communities, folks without homes, drug addicts, and for some, even those who are differently politically or religiously affiliated people who live on the fringes of our society and whom we are called to love, to offer our love when everyone else shows them hate. This is an essential theme in Luke. Jesus sees those that no one else does. And Jesus tells stories of coming near and seeing folks that most of us refuse to see and then loves them anyway, heals them anyway, returns them to wholeness anyway. When the spirit comes from heaven and descends on Jesus and says, you are the beloved with you, I am well pleased. In that we are called by God through the love that we have received to see the you that has not been heard or seen around us. The you that has been ignored and segregated based on something they may or may not be responsible for. To see the you that thinks, acts, or looks differently than us. And then we're called to love them anyway. 
That is what a you statement should feel like. I'm sure most of us, if not all, have seen or been a part of many, many baptisms. Every baptism I have ever been a part of or witnessed, I cry every single time. And I know that I've shared this before, but this poem describes baptism so perfectly. James Autry writes, there's something about putting people under the water and raising them up. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, something that makes people cry, that makes them want everything to be all right, that makes them want to leave this place and be better, to immerse themselves in their lives and somehow be washed clean of all the things that they should not have done and still should not want to do. That's it. Not the other things. Not the star in the east, the treasures in heaven, or any of the old stories. Not even life after death. It is only to be new again. Something I find particularly powerful is adult baptism. There's something very deeply felt when an adult comes to be marked by God. Hearing the words of the minister say, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. There is no mistaking, mishearing, or misinterpreting that you statement. When someone who perhaps never imagined that God's love could be for them experiences that love of God through the loving embrace of a congregation. That is powerful, life-changing stuff. Not just for the one being baptized that morning, but for the congregation who pledges to love and support them in that baptism. In that shared sacrament, both experience that awesome love of God. This morning, I want to end with a short story by Reverend Carolyn Lewis, the pastor that I mentioned earlier. In the story, she has just finished a service where she's preached on Jesus's baptism, explaining that when we are baptized, God claims us as God's own. She writes, after the service, a longtime member of the church, a 90-year-old woman named Dot, came up and said, Carolyn, is that really true? That when we are baptized, that God baptizes us? Carolyn replies, well, yes, Dot, that is what we believe. And then she told me why she doubted. Dot had a sister born too early and not expected to live, about three years before Dot was even born. The only option was to bring her home for her two or three month lifespan. During that time, the grandmother baptized the little baby. Then when Dodd's sister eventually did die, of course her parents set up a meeting with the pastor for the funeral. And the pastor told them that he would do the funeral, but not in the sanctuary because he had not baptized the baby. The funeral was held in the basement of the church. Dot then said to me, do you think my sister is okay? The sister she never met, the sister she had mourned her entire 90 years, the sister for whom she wondered, did God really love her? Oh yes, Caroline replies, the you that your sister heard God meant, and God did not and will not ever let her go. Let us be the grandmother to that terminal baby. Let us be the hand that reaches down and pulls someone up. 
let us be the wide open arms welcoming someone home. Let us live out our baptism, knowing that we are endlessly loved while being called and chosen to show that love to others. Amen. We are blessed this morning to have Heather and Patrick offer music this morning. And I'm going to mute myself. We share what we have as an act of love. Through the offering of gifts, we share our love with others and the community. Delta United Church depends on your faithfulness. So as you are able, please continue to support the church. During the choral response, we reflect on our offering. Let us pray together. Gracious God, these gifts come from our hands and our hearts. They represent the products of our labors. They symbolize our commitment to your church. They show our willingness to do your will on earth. Bless their use. Encourage our abilities and focus our actions that we may be a blessing to others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to enter into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Ever present God, you call us to be the light in the world, to open the eyes that are blind, to thaw the heart that is frozen to move the feet that are stuck. 
Help us to answer your call that these things may come to pass. God of grace and glory, we pray for those who suffer from pains and sorrow, for those whose hearts are broken. We pray for those whose families are fractured. We pray for those whose lives are ravaged by war. We pray for those who struggle with poverty and hunger. We pray for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for pouring out your spirit on your son and pouring your spirit out on us too. May we too hear you say to us this day, that this is my son, this is my daughter, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Spirit of Gentleness.
So as we leave this worship time, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. And may the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. <laughs>